Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of Northlight Images, and um, in this video I'm doing a short review of this, the GFX 100 Mark II. Um, I normally use these days a GFX 100S, and uh, for those of you wondering why am I doing a camera review, because I it, it's not my thing, is camera reviews generally. Uh, there are so many people do them, and many people do them very well. I tend to do quite specialised stuff, which is why I was looking at the Fujifilm 30mm tilt shift lens. Now, I've, I've produced some videos about that. I'm in the midst of writing a detailed review of it, and there will be two videos to go with just looking at that particular lens. But um, Fujifilm said to me, why am I testing it? Well, they asked me, would I like to have a look at it? And they sent the GFX 50, uh, sorry, GFX 100, Mark II, and the new 50mm f1.7 lens to go with it. Now, both of these necessary, the lens, 50mm lens, I don't use a great deal, obviously on medium format or small medium format as this is. The 55 is down equivalent focal length in the 40s on 35mm. Uh, uh, not a focal length I use a great deal. It's also uh, features like this. It's got quite snappier um, autofocus. It's got face detect, all the things like that. Um, I'm an architectural photographer, an industrial photographer. I do macro. Um, when I photograph people, it tends to be people wearing high-vis jackets, workwear, or operating machinery. So um, I'm, I don't do sports, I don't do wedding photography. So you can see why some people say, say, well, why on earth are you testing this? Well, several people have asked me, is it a worthwhile upgrade from the GFX 100? Now I've only been using the GFX 100 S here this year. Um, I really like it. Um, I do still use my Canon 5DS for some things, you know, different cameras for different types of work. Um, so really, I'm looking at what's what's the difference? Would you actually make it? Would you actually get rid of one of these and get one of these? Well, I give you the quick answer now. And uh, is that unless you have, you know, plenty of spare money, um, the price increase that you get between these effectively, you're getting a few features on this that you don't get on this. Image quality is essentially the same. Um, I come back to this as if you've got other cameras in this range as to whether you might consider this one. Of course, if you've got the money for it and you just like getting the latest new kit, well, I'm sure you'll pile on in and get one of these anyway. So um, there you go. But what are the key differences between these two? Well, you know, this is a little bit older. The sensor is essentially the same. Now, there's been some stuff about the uh, micro lenses on the sensor being slightly different. If they are, it makes no difference that I could discern in any of the work that I'm doing. The key differences here, I know, are obviously the ergonomics. Um, this one actually feels a little bit better in the hand. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, the difficulty is with anything like this, you get used to things. It also depends on what size hands you've got, for example. Now I've got long, long, thin fingers, which means that in using something like this, even when I was using the 30 millimeter tilt shift lens, I didn't find any problems with the knobs getting in the way or anything like that. So always take a big pinch of salt when somebody says, oh, I find this one holds better. It just depends what your hands are like as much as anything, and also your style of shooting and things like that. But key differences, I mean, well, the display on the top here, it's a clearer, best, slightly better looking display. It's a, it's a little bit bigger. I don't think it's, yes, yeah, it's fractionally bigger, not that you're really going to notice. But the key ergonomic differences you can notice are the buttons here. Now, I left this set at the button here with face detect. Now, I tried the face detect uh, and, and it works quite well. It works reasonably with this, but I'm going to say these are perhaps not cameras that you would use for sports work and things like that. So the fact that this is faster AF and everything uh, and generally snappier performance than this one, I'm going to say that's not going to make a lot of difference to many people. If it does make a difference to you, then I'm 
going to suggest for the kind of photography you're doing, you might not be using one of these anyway. Um, the files that come out of these are huge. Now, it doesn't bother me the slightest because I make large prints. Um, I don't do lots and lots of photos when I do a job. But, you know, just in testing with this, this particular lens, the 1.7 works very nicely. So it's got the normal Fuji um, semi-auto and manual control of uh, aperture here. The focus ring, as you can see, just turns and turns. So there's not a direct connection. It's a fly-by-wire style um, focusing ring. Uh, it's fully internal. There's no, uh, there's no bits move when you do it. Um, it's an excellent lens. If you need that focal length and you don't mind the bulk of it, it comes with this lens hood, which you can take off and make it a bit smaller, but if you don't mind the bulk of it, it's quite nice. Um, it's not one I'd probably use myself. As I say, I was specifically testing the 30 millimeter tilt shift and that is a superb lens. No autofocus, no nothing like that, fully manual focus. Talking of manual focus, somebody did ask me, did I find the 30 millimeter tilt shift with its uh, manual focusing easier with the better viewfinder on this. And the viewfinder on this is noticeably better. I said, no, it's probably only noticeable when I'm thinking about it being better. Did I find it harder to work on this after I'd used? Not really. Um, yes, it should. That's probably as much as anything due to my eyesight. In using the 30 mil tilt shift on it, I found no significant difference in ability to do manual focus. Um, I manually focus either using the screen on the back, if I've got it on a tripod, if I'm using such lenses handheld, and I do happily use tilt shift lenses handheld. Although I will be looking at the 110 millimeter tilt shift when I get a chance to at some point as well. But for the 30 millimeter, which is roughly equivalent field of view of a 24 millimeter on a 35 mil full frame, um, no problem at all, love using it on this. Equally well loved using it on this. Um, did I find any, any differences between? Not really. Um, if there are differences, they are hidden away in performance levels. So for example, uh, quite a few, uh, there was a little bit of confusion when this camera first came out over the way the marketing materials were phrased. And I always remember when a camera comes out, irrespective of what make it is, you're reading marketing materials, the aim being to sell cameras. So you know, uh, sometimes a bit of ambiguity does creep in. Uh, some people thought, perhaps wishful thinking as much as anything, that um, there was a new, pro new, um, a new sensor in this. Well, it's not really a new sensor. It's the same sensor. Um, it's the same 100 or 102 megapixel sensor in this and in this. You know, so results are similar. Yes, the processor is uh, sharper in this um, and will you know, pull your images through a bit further. It does more work on them, hence the face and animal detection. Animal de I don't take photos of animals. Um, I, yeah, it's just not something I do. But you know, it, this is a bit snapper, but not enough for me to go, oh, I wish I'd got one of these rather than that. Now, if Fuji said to me, you can keep this one, we'll take this one back off you, of course I'd take it. And the key question there is, let's say I've got this camera here and I'm offered this one as, uh, as an exchange. How much would I pay to replace this one, which is, I barely had a few thousand shots on it, with this one, which is, you know, okay, it's a demo one, still hasn't had many shots on it. And I realized that I probably wouldn't pay more than a few hundred quid for it for that. And even then, that's because I thought I ought to at least offer something. Now, I'm not being offered this. So this one is going back tomorrow. And this one carries on as my main uh, as the main sort of camera that I'll be using for my work. Other features on it, uh, as I mentioned, the electronic viewfinder, this one does come off. Now, this is just the straight viewfinder. There's a cap goes over this if you don't like using viewfinders. You need an adapter to be able to have a tilt option for this. The standard version here does not tilt up. Now, I know some people like that about the original 100, uh, that you could tilt the viewfinder like that. Not something I have experience of, so I don't know whether I'd actually like it or not. So um, I didn't get one with this, the adapter plate, so can't really say. But this is a better, faster viewfinder. 
And then they say, yeah, maybe that will make a difference to you. Didn't make much of a difference to me. Um, I'm, I'm quite happy with what this does. But once again, maybe my eyesight. Right. Well, what else can I look at? Well, some of the bits of this 50 mil lens here is rather nice. Um, this is this is Karen looking rather um, sternly at me. Uh, I'm just just sitting there, me fiddling about with the camera, just testing the eye focus uh, the, uh, detection, face detection, and that's at f1.7, um, very thin depth of field as you'd expect. F1.7, that's probably 3200 ISO or something like that. But yeah, the the, the depth of field is a fraction of an inch, um, and if I look very very carefully. Um, and I took a few of these, but this one was approved for publication. Um, if I look very, very carefully, I can see that it has focused slightly on the eye glasses rather than the iris of the eye. Now, at this size, it looks fine. It looks lovely and sharp. It's got a nice soft out background. The face detect, um, I was down, down, the street, you know, down the street down where I live. Um, and was just standing around, just pointing the camera and letting it pick faces and do it. And this picture of this lady, it's pinch up, it's zoomed right in. I think this is F2.8. Uh, the F1.7 is just a little bit too critical. Now, if you want the F1.7, you'll find it useful. Um, I would probably use F2.8 more. The image, there's a minimal increase in sharpness. It's, it's a very good lens, but all Fujifilm lenses are like that. So I've got that. That's, that's taken with that. Um, another one, just a guy walking along. Um, I've just got the camera. I'm letting it focus continuously on that and just taking a few pictures. Just to And it's captured it. It's got a nice soft bit of background. That's, that's f2.8 as well. I thought I'd give it a bit of a chance and get a bit of depth of field. Once again, it's fairly good on his eye there, but it's not spot on. But remember, I am not a person photographer. I don't go out taking shots like this very well. I do sometimes just for the hell of it, but um, it's not what I do for my job. My subjects, if they're moving, they're moving machinery. They're people doing things. And stuff. Yeah, so it's, it's a very different sort of feel to stuff. But that's that's a nice, gives a nice feel for it. And the subject isolation is good, um, which you'll get with a lens like this. And yeah, the medium format, you're using a larger sensor, longer focal lengths, so you get more noticeable depth the field like that uh, or limited depth field I should say. Nighttime um, it works treat this is this was uh, this is f1.7 as well. Um, I've processed these images using DxO Pure Raw. Now um, I've got this is still this is going to be my main machine at some point uh, Mac Studio. It whizzes through them um, even the 100 megapixel files from this um, for 70 odd files, I think it estimated about 20 minutes to do it. I didn't go through all of them doing it, but just testing a few, it cleaned up nicely. But the images I get out of this are the same as this. Now, the 80 ISO thing, several people said, ah, yes, there's a new 80 ISO mode. Well, if you look at some of the, you know, some of the stuff by people who've, who've delved into the technical details of this, it's partly a few tricks of cutting off noise and raising the black point and all kinds of things like that, which you may not actually want. So in general, when I looked at images at 100 ISO between this, and I used the uh, 30 millimeter tilt shift lens, I could see no real difference. Now, does that mean there is no difference? doesn't. It just meant that in my looking at the images, I couldn't actually see a difference between, which is hardly surprising. Um, the improve, improved performance of this is not going to massively jump out of this. So that comes up you know, so for that. Once again, which would I pick? Well, I'll pick what I've got. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to fork out the money for one of these because I've got that. Now, nighttime shots again. The detail of this, this is this the 50, this is at f2.8. Uh, this shop, lit shop at night. Um, there's a box of coconuts there. And if I zoom in at full size, you can see detail on the coconuts. This is at 3200 ISO. Um, so, you know, with a lens like this and this, you can just go out and take snaps at night, no trouble at all, uh, process the images. It's great. Whether I would always feel comfortable wandering around at night taking photos with uh, this value of kit sitting with me, I'm not quite so sure. Um, uh, I didn't take it out for a long while uh, because it's not mine and I would hate for it to get nicked and for me to have to stump up for, for covering it. But yeah, not bad. Uh, 
pictured in daylight of this tree here. Now, it looks here, this is at 1.7, it looks like, look, nice soft background here, out of focus here, the tree's nice and sharp as well. Um, but remember what I said about the very, very thin depth of field for this, because if I look at detail of it, we can see that it's focused on part. We're showing the lichen on here, and even part of the tree, just the curvature of the tree, that much away, it's starting to go softness. If I just go back again, that looks fine. That you can actually see where the fine detail, and the fine detail is just where it's focused and at that distance. So that's for that. Anyway, I'll round it off with a why update. Why would you, might you update? If you have a GFX 50 uh, model and you feel you want to go to 100, good move. Um, the 100 does give you that bit more detail in pictures and you can and that's that's usable even if you reduce size or crop it gives you the flexibility there if you wanted to do that would I go for this it depends um, do I really want the new features on this the the viewfinder the you know the snappier autofocus performance because with this appearing more of these will appear on the second-hand market. Now, one of these second-hand, they still go for a good price, but you can get one that's not been used much, and that tends to be from people who buy stuff because they must have the best, and then when the new one comes out, they buy another one and trade this one in. So there's a steady supply of stuff like this. If you're going from a 50, then if you've got the money, then I think you'd probably make the jump to this. If you want to save a bit of money, you'd go for a used version or even a new version of the 100S. Um, the differences from my point of view as a photographer are minimal. Um, that's not to say this isn't better. There are loads of little ways I can say it's better, but not that much better. Um, they're both excellent. And this is the problem I get because I, I do a lot of, if you're new to any of my videos, um, um, I do a lot of printing videos. I've got a big printer here, another one over here. I do printer testing and stuff like that. And a problem I've found with printers is that as they get better over the years, the differences between them get less and less and less and less that you can say, if you've got such and such a printer and a new one comes out, then unless the old one is broken or has problems like that, um, it's not worth replacing. Um, we're seeing in technology like this, we're getting to a plateau. So the next big advance is going to come when a new sensor is available. And that depends on Sony, because Sony make the, the sensor that goes in these. Uh, Fujifilm, likewise with Hasselblad, who use the same sensor as well, albeit with, some, with their, their sort of surroundings for it. The difference is that Small companies like that, or relatively small, cannot afford to develop entire new sensors for themselves. So until you see somewhere in the technical stuff that Sony have bought out a new medium format sensor that is the same size, because they do 150 megapixel one at the moment, but it's too large to fit in this style of body. And also the image circle of the lenses here wouldn't necessarily work with it. Until you see that, this is what you've got. Have a look at some of the technical reviews, which I'm sure will you know, appear on the web and, um, and YouTube at some point, although I much prefer written articles if I'm looking at the technical details of stuff. Look for that. You may see some comparisons which actually come up with some concrete numbers as to how this compares to this. From usability, yeah, I like the viewfinder. I like the feel of this. It has good feel. The buttons feel nice and easy to use. But I've got one of these. And that is very nice and it works very well. So if you've got any questions, please do ask. As I say, I do not in any way intend this as a comprehensive camera review. Um, so there are people who've been doing those for years and there are people who I will go and have a look at their reviews. Likewise, I've not looked at video at all on either this. I do not use this for video. I don't use this. I wouldn't, if I had this, I wouldn't use it for video. So this has all kinds of additional video features which are of zero interest to me. Um, I'm still using my old EOS RP here with uh, an old lens on it for shooting videos. At some point, if the channel gets a lot bigger, I don't know how big, but a lot bigger, we may upgrade the equipment. We may even go to 4K, but that ain't happening anytime soon. Um, I do not professionally 
shoot video. So I'm really not that concerned about the video features of kit like this. Um, obviously it's got the different card as well. So it's different. there are lots of technical differences, but you know, the most common question I've been asked by people is if you've got one of these, would you get one of these? For me, no. For most people, I'm gonna say maybe not. But if you've got smaller cameras, this is a great introduction to medium format and the range of lenses are good with it. Of course, and I mentioned the TS30, that's the lens that's really good. And that is without doubt for wide tilt shift lenses, it is the best lens I've ever tested. It's not perfect and there are issues of some issues with it, but they are trivial in comparison with other lenses I've looked at. But anyway, Hope that's been of some interest. As I say, if you've got questions, please do ask. Please do subscribe to the channel. Um, I'm not going to become a camera review channel on it. I will be concentrating on lenses, printing, color management, and all the usual stuff like that. But this is just as a bit of a diversion. And thank you to Fujifilm UK for actually saying, would you like to have a look at it? Because the answer is obviously, yeah, of course I will. So thanks for watching. Bye.